we hear, <clears throat> we hear in the first reading this evening some words. The lamb without blemish. The sacrifice of the lamb. The eating of unleavened bread. The death of the firstborn. The blood that marks our doors, that saves us from death. As we hear the words of the Passover, uh, that first Passover, this should be bringing to mind the Eucharist which we're celebrating tonight and every Eucharist that we do celebrate. It foreshadows what St. Paul speaks about in the second reading as he passes on what he received from the Lord. And in each of these things that I've mentioned, something is destroyed so as to bring life. Someone dies so that someone else might live. The lamb dies so that those who eat of it might live. The bread is eaten, destroyed, so that those who eat of it might live. The firstborn dies, so that God's people might live. And tonight we hear John's description of the Last Supper, and it's uh, different from uh, the other disciple, the other evangelists' rendering of it. Uh, it is a Passover, but he fails to mention bread and wine, and instead talks about the washing of the feet. He assumes we know the story of the bread and the wine, but he wants to teach us something else, a great mystery behind this. Jesus washes the disciple feet, disciples' feet. He removes his outer garment. He lays aside the garment and puts a towel around his waist and does the work of a slave, the lowest form of humanity. He then puts the cloths, the clothes back on again and goes back to the table. He took his garment up again and resumes his place, says another translation. It's interesting that John uses the same verbs in Greek for this putting aside and taking back up again as he uses in John 10. And in John 10, he says, I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own accord. And right at the beginning of the, this text, well, near the beginning, he says, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, I need my glasses for this writing. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands. They'd come from God and was returning to God. He came from God and was returning from God. He who is God took off the garment of divinity and descended to the lower, lowest place. In, in Philippians, we, when we heard this last week's Sunday, he was, his state was divine, yet Jesus Christ did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself. He took off his garment, the outward garment of his divinity, and assumed the condition of a slave. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet. And so he lowers himself, takes off his garment to come and wash our feet. And then he takes his garment back on 
And as another translation would have it, he resumes his place. So he strips himself of everything. He empties himself, taking on the form of a slave, even so far as to accepting death on the cross. It's not just he came down from heaven, but his flesh, he has taken on flesh, and that flesh now at, the, 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 at this Paschal Tide, during his death, his suffering and death, this is what he lays aside as his flesh is stripped from him. And as it is stripped from him, he washes us. He lowers himself to assume the condition of a slave but, and dies on the cross. And that dying on the cross is where he washes us in his blood. He pours the blood over us. Over, he marks our homes with his precious blood. And we are cleaned. And after his death and washing, he takes up his garments again. At the resurrection, he places, he is, his glorified flesh is raised and he takes his place once more with the Father. Do you understand what I've done to you? Says Jesus. Before that, he says, uh, well, as Peter, uh, uh, as Peter remonstrates with him, he says, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. You can have no part of me. You can have no inheritance with me. And we're to follow this example. Uh, what I have done to you, you must do. You, I've given you an example that you may copy what I have done. And so what he does here, what we celebrate here, is this act of love. Love one another as I have loved you. Copy what I've done to you. This is the example that we lower ourselves to the lowest position, that we, uh, we humble ourselves, serve one another, give our lives for one another, love one another as I have loved you. And as we lay down our lives for one another, we give life to each other.